first of all, uh, a point on Tuesday night against Atkinson. And a point earned, really. Yeah, it was. Um, first half wasn't good enough. I thought we were a bit passive. Um, I thought we needed to, everyone needed to get like half a yard or a yard closer to our men. Um, came in the break 1-0 down. Gaff had a few words. We changed a few bits tactically. In the second half, I thought we were on the front foot. Um, all the cliches in the ascendancy. We, we played with energy. We played with enthusiasm. Um, and it looked like there was only ever going to be one team who would go on and, and win the game, in my mind. Um, we got the equaliser and unfortunately had a few half chances but didn't quite do enough to, to get over the line for the three points. But a good point, um, Accrington have maybe been a little bit of a bogey team for us over the years, um, for whatever reason. Um, so another point on our total, you know, we obviously disappointed we wanted to take more than one point from the two games, but I think at times we have to be a bit realistic and, and realise where we come from and where we're going to. Um, it's another point on our total. and. If you'd have offered me third place after nine games in July or June, as it was when we had nine nine people on the grass first day of pre-season, I would have snapped your hand off for it. So we're in a good spot. We're really we're really pleased with how it's gone so far, and, and look forward to to Portsmouth on Saturday. You've been in the wars a bit recently. Then two head injuries against Wimbledon and then Lincoln, uh, and you took a few hard challenges against Accrington as well. How are you feeling yourself? Yeah, fine, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's all part of it. Um, unfortunately, I always seem to be the guy who gets kicked in the head, but it's fine. <laughs> My sister and my wife have been on at me all week to um, go and get a desk job or something, something a little less uh, dangerous, but I don't, think it, I don't think that's really for me. Um, it's part of the game, mate. Um, you know, if we continue to pick up points and, and I can put myself in the thick of the action, then, then, then great. I don't mind doing that one bit. I feel great. I feel fine. And um, just looking forward to Saturday. Hopefully selected, um, go out and train today and, and look to do all the right things to, to be in the gaffer's mind for selection again. That's, that's what it's all about at this club now. You know, the competition for places is, is huge, um, so you must be in a good spot if you're getting selected and that's what I aim to do. Like I said there, we've had a great start to the season and do you reckon that's down to the amount of players you've got in the squad now? It's, there's a lot of competition for places all around the pitch. Yeah, I, I, it's maybe one co contributing factor. It's not the only factor. Um, I think the fact that we've signed some very good players is a, is a good start. Um, tactics and um, and anything else don't really win football matches, as the gaffer always says. It, it's players that win football matches. You can put people in the right place and try and give them the right instructions. But we've now got better footballers than we've had over the last few years, and that's and that's plain to see. And, and our position probably reflects that. Um, you know, when you when you're able to bring in and sign the players like Fred Onyedima, Dave Wheeler, um, you know, Josh Parker. Uh, names Nam the offer board, Alex Patterson, you know Jack Grimmer. You know we've signed some really really good footballers this summer, and that's given everyone a lift around the place. I think from where we were, maybe May and June, where it's kind of like maybe looking at a budget cut and like I say nine players on the grass first day of pre-season. So suddenly you've got some of those faces walking through the door. You're thinking, wow, you know we're we're looking all right here. We're going to be better off than what we were last year. Let's go out and prove it. And that's that's luckily how it's you know it's gone. Pre-season was good. Took it into the first day of the season. Again, Bolton at home. Great fixtures start off, get a good home win, and, and things have kind of escalated from there, and, and we're, in a good, we're in a good position so far. We've had a great start, but Portsmouth is going to be a tough test for us because their league position is almost false. They're a strong team. Yeah, too right. They've had a few games called off because of you know one they missed with Berry and um, was there a, some kind of festival down in Portsmouth, I think. So they've missed a few games. Their position is false. They've got some, some really good footballers. We knew that from the game here. Um, at the end of last season, they got a really, really good team. Lost um, two of, of their really good players, Jamal Lowe and, and Matt Clark, from last year, but replaced them with quality. So we know that it's going to be a real, real stern test. Um, but you know, we're, we're in a good spot, and, and we look to we look to carry our form into the game. Um, we're playing with energy and, and enthusiasm at the minute. Like I say, the last two games haven't gone as as we wanted to, but we're feeling good at home, and, and we're looking forward to continue that on Saturday. You've played at Adams Park before when it's been nearly full, full to the brim. Um, how would it? How good would it be to kind of get that atmosphere back on Saturday? Oh, it'd be great. I think the home crowd so far this season have been absolutely brilliant. I think they've sensed that, sensed that we're in a good spot and they've wanted to come along and cheer and, and, and look for victories and that's what we've been able to give them so far. Saturday's not going to be easy by any stretch. You know, Portsmouth are a, a massive football club. In League 2 they were huge. In League 1 they're still massive and their crowds and their budget and the players they can go and you know attract is, is is far above what we are as Wickham Wanderers. But um, we're third in the league and, and the crowd are turning up at the minute looking for us to win and, and hopefully they'll turn up again in their numbers on Saturday and, and cheer us on to victory. Um, you know their support so far during the season has been brilliant as it has been over the years. Um, you know we've had some tough times and now hopefully we can move on and, and give them some even more enjoyable times to, to enjoy and, and, and sort of roll with us.
put the fans forum tonight. Um, Rob, the gaffer, and uh, Trevor hosting that one. Um, how has it been since Rob and, and Pete have, have come in? Brilliant. You know, Pete's enthusiasm and his energy whenever he's at the training ground is brilliant. Um, you know, and, and, and Rob's knowledge and know-how of how to run football teams. He's obviously done it in the past of sports teams in, in the US. Um, you know, and, and I think it's just given us that kind of stability as well. Um, knowing that the guys are here for the good and the future of the football club. It's given the gaffer stability to go and sign some um, good footballers, as I've said. And, and these aren't just on loan. You know, you're looking at Fred on your dimmer three years, David Wheeler three years, Nick Freeman signed three years, um, Alex Samuel signed three years. You know, this is the future of Wickham Wanderers. Um, it's not just a, a flash in the pan loan signings that are going to be gone in January. So. Um, it's added a real stability to us and I'm sure that's kind of reflected all around the place and, and we thank them for getting involved um, and I'm, you know, I'm really, really excited about what the future might hold um, with the guys, um, with Rob and Pete's input.